Hello, hello, I'm Jay and you're watching DS Tech Media and today I'm going to be showing you a way to turn your Android or iPhone into a DSLR camera better suited to digital photography. With ProShot, ProShot is an app that I've been using for years. It allows you to shoot in RAW format. It also has support for Apple's Pro Raw, and it has a ton of other features as well. The only catch is that it is a paid app, and I'm gonna try and show you why I think it's well worth the money. Also, would you kindly hit that like button, or if you're feeling really generous, hit the subscribe button. Helps a whole lot to get my videos promoted in the algorithms. But let's get into it, shall we? So first off, ProShot is not going to be for everyone, and the features and capabilities that I'm going to be showing you here apply only to my Google Pixel 7. Luckily, they do have a evaluation app so you can test and see what does or doesn't work on your exact phone, but it is an, a separate app. It's called ProShot Evaluator and it is in the Google Play Store. Rise Up Games is the developer and of course it's available on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Here is the list of the features this site also has a user guide for both the Android and iOS versions. And the total cost is a one-time purchase of $6.99. So not too bad. ProShot lets you pick the color of the UI. You have a lot of color options to pick from. There's even a CPU and RAM system monitor. You click customize you can change the default startup mode you can adjust compression levels for your jpeg photos and you can even set different functions for the volume buttons so you can set record video auto exposure lock or display then we've got rotation lock optical image stabilization you can set brightness all the way up when using ProShot and geolocation metadata You've got three active histograms to choose from. So for the Edges Plus, I had to hit up the developer. He said it increases sharpening. Some devices require it. Next to that, you've got two levels for noise reduction. There's minimum or high quality. Then you've got two different levels to pick from. Then there's auto exposure you can do manual spot metering where you select the location or you can set it to lock here I'm moving it around so you can see it automatically adjusting exposure and you could probably see it a little bit better right here it's in the top the bottom top under the bottom and this other four cornered square is the focus point so I'm going to set it to focus on the mic then onto the screen then I'll switch it to manual and now I can bring the microphone, bring it into crisp focus with the slider, then bring the display into focus. Then I can zoom in, adjust it from the zoom, even while you're recording video. You can also change your aspect ratio, and that'll actually give you different megapixels, and in some cases, even different cameras. And additionally, you can pick whether you want to shoot in JPEG, RAW, or both. You can also enable three different grids. On the other side of the UI, we've got focus, shutter, ISO, white balance, and flash. So I've already showed you the focus. Here's our shutter exposure time. Then there's the ISO light sensitivity, and you can set it from 47 all the way up to 11,906. Then there's the white balance. And in previous versions, I could use manual and I could adjust the color temperature in Kelvin. However, it's currently not working. The developer did mention that was an issue. And then we've got our flash. And these are our zoom settings. I have one times, two times, and 0 0.7 actually seems like that's a separate camera lens on my phone. But you can also zoom manually simply by moving your finger 
up or down. I prefer that so much over the pinch zoom. And the rest of the powers and capabilities lie in the, the mode dial and the drive dial. In the camera mode, we have auto, program, manual, and then custom one and two. We've got timers for one second, three seconds, seven seconds, or 10 seconds. At the bottom, in the drive dial, we've got photo, video, slow motion, light painting, or time lapse. So in the video settings, we've got all the way from 720 to 4.2K for my particular camera, as well as setting the frame rate from 24 to 60 frames per second. Above that, we've got low, standard, high, and high plus quality, and to the right, electronic image stabilization. But at the top, the bar that shows megabytes per second per minute, gigabytes per hour, which is a really, really nice feature. We've also got options for switching the microphone, the soundmates, our Bluetooth earbuds that I have, and they even give us options. So you can switch between 44.1 or 48 kilohertz and up to 320 kilobytes per second. We've got the option to switch between H.264 and H.265. Coding formats, H.265, it's higher compression, but even more important, we have the ability to shoot in flat or log. Flat means you're turning down the contrast, the sharpness, and the saturation. But log goes a step further and adds more of the raw sensor data, resulting in an image that's very robust and well suited for color correction. A lot of filmmakers shoot in log, and this is awesome because you're getting DSLR quality from an app for your phone. Slow mode can go all the way up to 240 frames per second to capture fast motion sequences. And then we have light painting. It's a long exposure type function, ideal for where you have a tripod. I wasn't really sure how to demonstrate this. I captured my synthesizer's waveform display, and here's what it looks like in video, so you can see it playing. And here it is through a four second light painting. And finally, we've got time lapse, which you can do photos or videos, which is pretty cool. You can set the intervals and for length, you can set it all the way up to infinity. And by the way, while I have spoken to the developer directly, I have in no way been paid to endorse ProShot. But what better way to do so than to show you the photos? This one here would be the raw, whereas this one here is after image processing and developing with Darktable. This photo is one of my favorites I've ever taken. It's a honeybee pollinating a magnolia, some color processing done. These ones sort of show off the ability to adjust focal point and focal length. Here's just a picture of a really cool car that you don't see every day. Uh, this one is zoomed in and processed. That would be the raw. And this one's been processed. This one here is a raw. This one is processed. And on these images where you have the sort of blurring on the outside, I used this clamp on lens for your phone. This is the two-part lens. This uh, works wonders and I figured I'd mention it. But yeah, just a little taste of some of the photos that you can get using ProShot. So here we have Darktable, basically an open source Lightroom. You can see every change you've made in the history stack on the left and you can revert back to that spot. You can also take snapshots and I'm putting this mask over Arlo's face and then I'm adjusting the sharpness. And so you have a lot of flexibility and you have all of the data from the sensor present in a raw file. And all of ProShot's photo options carry over to the video as well. 
Here I'm using my clamp on lens with a tripod getting this really nice and crisp looking video of my GoPro. And so there you have it. That's Pro Shot. Can't recommend it enough. I love a lot of the photos that I've taken with it. Uh, what do you think? Please uh, let me know what you think of the photos in the comments below. I hope you found this video insightful. I appreciate if you like, share, and subscribe for more. I'm going to be doing more videos on Android apps. I have several others that are highly recommended. But I usually do a lot of open source and Linux based content. So if that's your thing, definitely subscribe. I thank you for watching. Once again, for DS Tech Media, I'm Jay, and I'll see you in the next one.